in news that I generally wouldn't care about, but I think is really interesting in terms of understanding the role that influencers and you know public figures play within social media nowadays or within current culture. We have breaking news, which you probably heard already, but Morphia finally dropped Jeffree Star. Right? This is a big deal. This is a big deal. This is a big deal because. The last few weeks, we've had a lot of drama, right? We had Tatty Westbrook coming back out again with a video, crying and explaining why she decided to throw her friend under the bus and essentially excuse him of, you know, some very inappropriate behavior with minors, right? She insinuated the fact or basically kind of put it out there that she was afraid this was going on. And even though James Charles at the time was her friend, she thought the best way to sort of warn him about the situation was to sit down and make a video. So the backlash from that is just kind of rumbled on. It hasn't necessarily stopped. And we have this issue where, you know, we have like conflicting issues happening at the same time, right? We have videos of Jeffree Star resurfacing from old where he's using, you know, the N-word and other sort of, you know, slurs and being a bit of a dick that he was back in the day. We have videos of Shane with his edgy humor that was never edgy and just super offensive um, resurfacing. We have Jeffree, no, yeah, then we have Tati Westbrook with her explanation, essentially telling everybody that Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star manipulated her, quote unquote, into making that uh, Bye Sisters video in the first place. And then we have all these fans just like waiting to see who gets cancelled first right like just waiting and like who's gonna get cancelled and i guess from my point of view being an outsider and just kind of viewing everything um it always surprised like it, it's genuinely surprising to me anyway at least right how much it's generally surprising to me how loyal social media stars fan bases are to their you know person they never drop them like, it never really happens, usually, for the most part. Like, I look at someone like Onyissian as a good example. No matter how many videos people put up of him being an absolute jerk, a bit of a creeper, he just always kind of steamrolls through it. Um, Keemstar is a good example. Like, it seems like the more reprehensible you are online, it's actually the better, because at least people then, at least your fans know exactly who you are. And I think the detractors don't necessarily understand that. And the people that, quote-unquote, they term as haters, they don't understand that, I think what's happening here is that Jeffrey Star, James Charles, no, Jeffrey Star and Shane Dawson's fans, actual fans, they know who they are as people. They're not surprised at these videos. They've seen those videos. They've come to peace with those videos. They accept that if you want to be a fan of Jeffrey Star, you have to accept his um, and Shane Dawson. You have to accept their checkered past. It's part of it, right? But part of the beauty of being a fan of somebody on social media is that if you just keep watching their videos, you're going to enable them to make more videos, right? It's not like supporting your favorite. It's not like supporting somebody on TV. If the show gets taken off air through no fault of their own, you've essentially lost the ability to communicate or see that person again, right? But in this case, the control is being put back in, the control is right back into the hands of the sort of audience and the content producers or the content, yeah, yeah, the content makers. As long as you're making the content, as long as people resonate with it, you've got a career. And I think that really pisses off a, a particular subsect of people who still have this idea that people can get cancelled in the conventional way because i think if you're operating conventional media if you're somebody that's on a major network you're you there's more chance of you getting cancelled because cancelled is basically losing your job but in the internet world it's very difficult to get cancelled because unfortunately youtube google all these sort of places they're kind of in bed with Shane and Jeffree Star because they enable those guys to make more money, which they then divvy up to these people in term, in the in the aspects of Google AdSense, right? So it's within their best interest to remain pretty hands-off with everything and allow the market to decide who gets a career and who doesn't get a career because it benefits their bottom line. And I think sometimes what it looks like for me from what's happening here is that without saying it, people are basically saying that they want uh, platforms that Google like YouTube, like Twitter, like Facebook, to basically take control and decide who gets a platform and who doesn't get a platform. And I think that's very dangerous. I think we should allow everyone free speech, um, you know, to a certain extent. But then I also think there needs to be more onus placed on the actual people that are watching this video. We need to take more responsibility. It happens a lot. Remember when that K-pop star uh, unfortunately uh, committed suicide and um then it kind of came out because i wasn't paying attention i forgot who it was uh please forgive me for not remember their name but i remember it being a big deal because this particular person was bullied relentlessly online via trolls right constantly kind of mocked about their appearance and blah blah and they were you know and again the fans didn't know that that person was already 
a little bit mentally fragile, right? They already had gone through some issues. So maybe they're a bit more susceptible to feeling down at the notion of somebody, random person on the internet calling them names. But essentially, the fans caused this person to push themselves to an extent where they had to commit suicide. That's the plain facts of it. Now, people will argue with it, don't want to argue with it, but they contributed some aspect towards it, right? But then when that happens, people on the internet, cause especially the people, the trolls that deal with that kind of things, will currently be like, oh, be completely hands off. No, that wasn't me. You can't say that. Um, everyone has, is in control of their own life, where they're friends, or they'll do that really horrible thing where they start sending out condolences when, you know, just a, a second ago, you were berating them online for them misspeaking or something. So I think we need to put more onus on the fans. We need to shine the light back around who are these people who keep consistently buying Jeffree Star's products, watching Shane Dawson's videos, accepting all his apologies. Who are these people? And we need to ask them exactly what's going on there. That's what we need to do. And we need to say, okay, if you want to cancel somebody, you don't cancel them by taking away their Twitter. You don't cancel them by taking away their Facebook and whatever. You should just stop supporting the product they put out. And slowly but surely, they'll just fizzle out and die anyway. I don't understand why that isn't a thing. I don't understand the bit, people don't have the ability to just like turn over to another channel. I don't get it. I think the Jeffree Star and James Charles thing with Shane Dawson is a bit weird in that, you know, the fact that it was kind of broadcast to the public. I think it should have never, that, it should have happened like that in the first place. It should have just kept their counsel privately and sort of communicated because essentially if it, what it boils down to was that Ty Westbrook felt a bit of a way because James Charles is like young 18, 19 I don't know how, he was at, how old he was at the time kid was essentially starting to feel himself right he was getting a little bit he was getting a little bit you know big headed he was kind of you know giving her the cold shoulder kind of big timing a bit and she felt a little bit away about it right which is understandable you've been you've been in the industry for many plus years decades whatever it may be you've got a bit of clout you essentially try to take him under your wing you try to be a mother figure but then he kind of pushed away like I don't need a mother I'm, I can do this on my own I get why you would feel annoyed by it but to allow that situation to then sort of mushroom into you accusing him of essentially pedophilia is insane that's insane right and that's the issue that's at hand there why didn't these adults they're all adults don't don't, don't start you know attacking tatty oh because she's 40 years old no they're all adults why didn't all these adults who were supposedly friends why couldn't they just come together and just discuss this issue openly in open format like hey i'm your friend i feel like you're being you're, you're acting away you're doing this you're saying that jeffrey said that just talk openly but they don't why because it's hollywood it's la it's social media these friendships are stupid are uh, superficial. We've seen it happen with the Chris D'Elia situation, right? How do Chris D'Elia's friends feel now? The allegations have sort of dried up. There's no real substance to most of them. For the most part, Chris D'Elia is guilty of what? Being a sex pest? Being too horny? Uh, trying to sm smash everything that moves? Trying to hook up with every girl that likes his picture? That's what he's really guilty of, right? Being way, way, way too debt hungry to, you know, lay pipe instead of like, you know, do stand up in the various towns he visits. That's it. But in the beginning, they were trying to suggest that he was essentially trying to procure underage girls while she was on tour. When that's not true. He's a old, he's a younger dude in his early forties that likes to smash girls under twenty one years of age. I think most guys in that position probably do, especially because he's one of the only comedians, especially I think in that scene who essentially has girl fans anyway. Have you seen some of the New York comics? Some of the guys that appear on Legion of Skanks? No offense. They don't look like Chris D'Elia, right? They don't necessarily get, they don't necessarily have teenage girl fans. He's the only guy that does, so he can be excused to get a little bit excited. Now, should he have been more of a gentleman? Should he have taken a bit more of an adult approach to the situation? Should he have treated the girls with a bit more respect? Because that's exactly what you see too in that situation with Chris D'Elia. Sorry to kind of interject here. But Chris D'Elia's situation, what you see essentially is he was an absolute dick to those girls, right? There was a, a few stories that some girls kind of, put out there where they agreed to make me up with him at his show and go to the green room but he can essentially cold shoulder them he didn't talk to them he was just on his phone the whole time and then when the show's over he immediately just tried to hook up he didn't even try to foreplay just straight away going to third base right that's when you're being a bit of a douche right treat girls with a bit of respect and you know they'll treat you with respect also right they'll be quick to kind of defend your honor but he didn't but that's the most situation was and then as soon as allegations come up you got brendan Schaub and brian kellen crying on camera because like as if their friend is a serial killer or something like what people you know unfriending him on instagram brian callan deleting pictures of him on his feed like come on man like what's going on here same with the situation with jeffree star and james charles if you're james charles friend why don't you talk to him first and understand what's going on give him a bit of you know if that's your actual friend talk to him find out what's actually going on but they don't do that and they broadcast it to the world and then the fans are sat there waiting. And the fans are in an awkward position because they're like, okay, should I keep supporting this person or not? I think you should do whatever you feel is best. 
if with all the information you have available, if you've seen everything that Shane Dawson's done in his past and you can generally sit there and say, you know what, I'm okay with it because he's a different person now, cool. You should, you should be allowed to support him if you want. If that's what you generally feel like as an adult, you come to that conclusion, even if you're a child, whatever, you have all that information to hand, you've seen all the old videos, you've seen all these racy jokes and these kind of, you know, um, race baiting humor that he used to kind of always do, which was, you know, never really, he's just, to be honest as well, I don't really find his comedy offensive. I just found it really bad. He could, he wasn't really, he was, which is makes him really, uh, which you now explains why Shane Dawson has done so many pivots in his career. He's trying to essentially find his voice in YouTube and, you know, he's probably got it now. Um, and obviously it looks like he might have lost it, but um, the comedy was just horrible. He's not funny. It's all well and good making, taking a piss out of black people, Asian people, whatever it may be, but just at least be funny, right? I think you get spews that way if you're funny at least, but he's not funny. He's just not a funny dude. Um, that kind of self-deprecating, I'm poor humor, my mental health sort of stuff, it kind of gets tiring over a while, isn't it? That's essentially what he's turned into now with, with a sprinkling of, of the of the conspiracy videos. But there's part of me that feels a little bit sorry for him too because Shane Dawson's also kind of turned himself into this platform where he essentially rescued people's career, right? You look at someone like a Tanner, you look at somebody like a, like a Jeffree Star, he's really good at kind of reshaping the narrative of people, right? Even the stuff that he did with them, um, uh, Jake Paul I think right that video he did with him about oh, is he a sociopath or whatever which kind of made people like him more in a little bit right if that was actually possible and now look these same people are completely quiet they're not supporting him they're not really going out there and saying that he's their friend and they're going to support him through whatever he's going through they're all kind of like hands off right arms distance it's really disgusting to see that and then Jeffree Star as well he disappeared out no he's gone he's disappeared but now we're probably going to hear from him because Morphe have dropped him that news came out the other day. Morphe have removed or are in the process of removing all Jeffree Star cosmetics from their store, which is a big deal because people only really, it feels like in the makeup world, people only really heard of Morphe through their affiliations and uh, brand deal and sponsorships with really leading MUA influencers on YouTube. It feels like it. I don't think people are really that au fait with the name um, Morphe prior to that. It was synonymous with like your favorite YouTuber that does makeup. And now they've sort of like split ways um, with Jeffree Star. This is an article from Cosmopolitan sort of like breaking down some issues. It says Morphe announced that they are cutting ties with Jeffree Star following the controversy. It says here that Morphe have announced that they are cutting ties with Jeffree Star and are no longer selling his products uh, following the recent controversy surrounding the entrepreneur in YouTube beauty community. Jeffree and fellow YouTuber Saint Dawson were recently accused by Taylor Swift of manipulating her into posting her biased video about James Charles in May 2019. Tight Westbrook as well, man. Like, take some responsibility, my dear. She's such a like, uh, or maybe it's her personality as well. Maybe that's it. Maybe she's just got that kind of personality where, regardless of her age, she's just easily led. You could convince Tati to do anything. It feels like for the most part. But God mighty, man. Like, oh, okay, your your two your friends are telling you your other friend might be a bit of a creep. Can you at least speak to him? Is that possible? Send him a text, an email. If you're awkward about speaking on the phone. It continues. It says, um, meanwhile, Jeffrey's longtime friend, uh, Tab, recently claimed Jeffrey had made a host of racist and derogatory and offensive comments. In addition, an image of Jeffrey, including swastika symbol, was circulated, which has since been was yeah since apologized for. Morphe decision to comes after Shane Dawson's conspiracy collection with Jeffrey Star Cosmetics seemingly became no longer on sale on Morphe website, causing speculation that it had been removed in the wake of the CERN scandal surrounding Shane. However, Morphe have not confirmed or denied their claims. Morphe explained the decision to cut ties with Jeffrey, writing a statement on Twitter saying, Today we have made a decision to create to cease all commercial activity related to Jeffree Star and affiliated products. We expect this to conclude within the next coming weeks. As we look to the future, we will continue to share updates on what lies ahead for Morphe Brand. Now, I think in terms of cancellation, if a brand you're working with, a corporation, decides to cut ties with you based on the things you say in public, fine. But I think more owners should be put on the actual viewership. Why are you supporting somebody that says these things time and time again, involved in t controversy after controversy, uh, always apologizing, always seems to be involved in some sort of scandal or drama? Why do you keep supporting him? That's the issue that I hand it. You look at people like a Bogo, you look at someone like a Trisha Paytas, pretty apprehensive, pretty repulsive characters in general, from my point of view, right? I don't know how people can watch that kind of content. I just don't get it. But they're very successful. 
Now, part of the reason is because the fans actually think they're funny. Or no, part of the reason could be they're actually good at what they do. They're actually talented at what they do. They have a way of engaging and creating content and, you know, being charismatic in front of camera that people just can't seem to pull themselves away from. And I think you should be allowed to keep watching it if that's the fact. But don't turn around and tell me the best solution to kind of get these people off the platform is to put the responsibility back into the hands of someone like a YouTube or a Google or a Twitter and say, hey, you should delete people. You should cancel people. You should de-platform people. No, it should be up to the fans. If the fans don't want to watch you anymore because you keep making too many mistakes, they should be allowed to end your career if need be because those are the people that you're playing towards, not YouTube, not those platforms. I don't think we should give those platforms that kind of power. We should allow them only to be facilitators, right? Provide you with a platform to do certain things. They have their terms of services that you need to kind of abide by. But saying that they should decide who gets to say something or not is insane. That's ridiculous. And again, it just, it puts, you're kind of excusing the responsibility of the fans. You're excusing, you're kind of absolving them of any responsibility because honestly, like if you watch that, if you watch those, if you've, if you've gone through that thread of Shane Dawson's um, past, um, you know, errors back in the day, and you could generally say you're still a fan of him, then I question your sanity, but you're allowed to watch him. If you generally have watched those videos of Jeffrey Star from, maybe Jeffrey Star was a bit longer in the tooth in terms of, when those things occurred but if you can generally stand a personality like jeffree star then i question your i question your motives or your moral compass too but i understand if you want to be a fan i get it the issue is these people sitting around wanting i don't know everyone to cancel everyone it's like and i and, and part of me also thinks as well like jeffree star is unfortunately just too big of an entity to cancel in at this case at this point jeffree star cosmetics I, i'd hate to even imagine what that kind of what that brand does annually in terms of sales so let's say he, he, his YouTube gets deleted and he can still sell tons of makeup to people that don't give us stuff about the YouTube drama. Again, I think it's, it should be such a, it should be a teachable moment this, you know, to tell people to kind of mind their own business, to kind of support their friends, to, you know, keep things, you know, out of public, to sort of, you know, uh, pull up their friends if they make a mistake. But instead it's turned into this whole weird cancellation drama thing. It's just bizarre. Why, like, whereas what for me looking at it from the outside point of view, I'm just thinking, why have these group of friends who have made a lot of money together, who are very successful, who have uh, an adoring fan base collectively, right, and separately, why were they unable to sort this issue out behind the scenes? Why couldn't they just talk to each other if they're so close? Why couldn't they do that? Why did they have to broadcast everywhere and make it so messy? Because I think fans are allowed to keep, if you want to keep regurgitating clips of Shane Dawson saying race, ra uh, racist stuff and Jeffree Star, you know, saying some really racy stuff too. Fair enough. You're allowed to do that. Fans can do what they want. But why can't these people just talk to each other and sort issues out like grown-ups? Why does it all have to descend into, you know, mudslinging and innuendos and gossip and rumours? It's so bizarre. It's so bizarre. Especially when, I don't know, we all make mistakes, right? We all make errors, but I don't know. Talk to your friends first about it. Because if... The, if <sighs> Because if everyone else cancels you, who do you really have, right? That's a problem as well. They wrap their world, they, they kind of wrap themselves up in this kind of YouTube Hollywood life and then they don't necessarily go to the depths of trying to talk to or communicate to their friends. So then when something does go wrong, who do you, who do you have? Really, really bizarre situation, man. But yeah, Morphe has dropped Jeffrey Star. Let's see what happens next going forward. Well, I set to see some kind of statement from Jeffrey. It'll probably be a... <coughs> a surface announcement not much depth to it he'll probably try and spin it in a way that he usually does but be interested to see what happens going forward because i my assumption or my guess would be jeffrey star never says anything because I, I just don't think he can say anything like what's he going to say at this point in time there's too much time has elapsed um he hasn't this he, he, he was obviously showing he doesn't care about his friend jeff shane dawson um he's obviously shown he doesn't necessarily care about the allegations that have kind of sprung up up scram scram sprung back up um, he won't really accept responsibility because that's not really his personality. So I don't think he's he's gonna need to explain himself or he want to. He'll make he might just dance around it and just say like girl and all that sort of stuff, right? He won't really answer any questions or really get to the bottom of it. I don't think so. Shane Dawson's nothing he can do either because I just think people don't necessarily like him. I think people are just annoyed that he's got a career still. So he's gonna perpet he's he's gonna be in this perpetual kind of purgatory camp cancellation purgatory where whenever he does a m misstep someone's going to resurface the clips of him you know it's trying to wank you know in front of a picture of willow they're going to resurface the clips of him in brown face black face it's just going to keep happening because no one likes him 
And then James Charles is set effectively as the one that's won out the whole situation because he's come out this looking, you know, even better than he did previously. Essentially, you know, it, essentially it boils down to jealousy, right? They were getting jealous of this guy. They didn't want him to get the success that he was clearly going to get. He was on a real upward trajectory at that point in time, right? He's going, he was going off like an absolute rocket. They went to sort of like, you know, uh, dim his light a little bit and it kind of worked, right? They essentially accused him of the one thing that, you know, when you get accused of, it sort of sticks, with, sticks to you like mud. It's really hard to kind of get it off. And he's still suffering the consequences of it now. That's the thing that's really mad about it. No one seems to have, no one seems to really be talking about the fact that James Charles was, was a basic accused of being a pedophile. And it still kind of haunts him to this day. Anytime he kind of likes a picture of someone that looks a little bit underage, people are always in the comments saying stuff, screenshotting it. It's like, God damn it, man. But hey, what can you do?